In recent videos, I took a look at the health spa electrodes, the ones that are designed to detox your feet by sucking all the impurities out electrically by sophisticated electronic means. And it did get me wondering, what is actually in a typical kit from China when you get one of these units? So let's put these electrodes out of the way because this one does come with its own electrode. So I'll put these ones out of the way, probably causing an avalanche of the process. And we can take a closer look at this one, we can test it. I want to give a shout out to Alexander Rock who sent a generous contribution via PayPal to help cover the cost of one of these. I'd actually just ordered one at that point in, in time anyway. But that helped greatly, thank you very much. So what you get in the package is the unit itself and it's designed to clip into an existing tray. Now let me just read the instructions here. And the instructions are written in good English. Please read this manual carefully before using the product and keep this sheet for future reference. Safety instruction, blah, blah, blah. It covers every possibility of who should and shouldn't use it, the broken skin, etc. You get a controlling panel times one an array times one, the foot basin times one. No foot basin, I'm guessing that is just logistics and an adapter. Uh, power 60 watts, it says, but then it contradicts that by looking at the back of this and it says power 25 watts. 12 volts, it comes with a power supply, the power supply comes with one of those little non-compliant plugs and that says a lot, particularly when you're going to be putting your foot in a bucket of water with electrodes, I'm not sure I'd use the existing power supply that comes with it, it's a standard 12 volt DC power supply, this one is rated 12 volts, 2 amps, uh, tip is positive, just standard configuration, I'm not going to be using this one for safety reasons, I should put that down there and try and remember what it is. Let's get the electrode out as well. And the foam out the way. So it comes with these items. It also comes with a little uh, scoop for the magic health salt. Separate the lid from the foot basin. As shown, comes a little clip-on thing. Clip the unit on. Plug the unit into the power supply. Plug the electrode in. Uh, it shows a different connector there. Uh, place the electrode into the bowl and add the salt and it says put the array into the foot basin and add water as shown in figure 5 make sure that water surface is over the top in the array after that add 0.1 gram of salt into the water, that's a small quantity I was adding a lot more than that maybe that's why I was getting such invigorating detoxification connect the power and then the 6th light indicator circled in figure 6 on the controlling panel will start flickering flashing, this means that the appliance is in the standby mode Put your feet into the foot basin, press the start button to start the foot spa course as shown in figure 7, the array will start producing bubbles as shown in figure 8, and then basically speaking it steps from 1 LED, then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, uh, should I say 6. Uh, after you start the foot spa, the 6 light indicators will turn on one by one every 5 minutes as shown above. After 30 minutes, the control panel will re-enter the standby mode with flashing LEDs, and one course of foot spa finishes. Nice. It also comes with some troubleshooting stuff in the back, like, it's not working. Have you plugged it in? Right, I think the best thing to do here is get in a little test rig. So I have a porta pow a porta pow which will monitor the current. And we'll plug this in here. And we'll plug the electrode in. And we'll get a quiescent standby current initially. So I'm going to use the bench power supply to power this. So let's hook the croc clips onto here and I'll bring a bowl of water up shortly. Uh, bench power supply is now on. Let's just wait for it to stabilise because it is processor based, which is its, its downfall. Uh, beep, the unit uh, powers up, the LEDs on it are now flashing on and off. They're gallium phosphide LEDs, not exactly top of the range. But that's okay, they're functional and they'll last a long time. 12.5 volts, that'll probably drop under load. The quiescent current is bouncing up and down around about 30 milliamps at the moment. If I press the start button, uh, the current then stabilises around about, say, 40 milliamps. It's probably nothing compared to what it's going to be. Let's slide this out of the way. Let's bring up a bowl of water. And then make a huge mess on my bench, as one does. So I shall end the treatment session, I'll get the scoop and I'll get the special magical health salts. Keep in mind this is a tiny quantity of water compared to what you'd normally use, so let's add just a little bit, just a little tiny bit, just to start to get it sort of semi-conductive. 
Reminds of the uh, McDonald's stirrer spoons. Some of you may be too young to remember that. McDonald's used to have little teaspoons like this. But they had to remove them because people were using them to measure cocaine. Or heroin, or something like that. Because they just held the right amount, apparently. Right. In goes the electrode. Is it going to go... Nah, I'll put it on its side. That's better. Right. Uh, in comes the meter. Can you see that okay? I think you can. Uh, let's start the treatment. So the current has gone up to 540 milliamps. And it's holding there, so it's about 500 milliamps, I'd say. But is that being affected by the conductivity of the water? I've got the little bubbles are coming out. Um, do we add more salt and see if it has a dramatic effect to the current or if it's regulating the current, let's say? Oh, we're up to an amp now. Oh, we're up to two amps. Okay, let's just... Uh. Let's give it a bad time. Okay. The current, although it peaked there, is stabilising back down to 1.5 amps. Does it have current regulation built in? More salt. Let's throw the whole lot in. Let's give it a bad time. Uh, I'll measure the voltage across this. Can I measure the voltage across this? I could theoretically stick... Uh, uh, it's certainly it's making the water mangy, which is, of course, all the impurities coming out of your body, etc. Uh, the current has gone back down, so it is regulating the current itself. The voltage... I'll nudge the voltage off a bit to compensate for that, up to 12. It's 1.3 amps. It is current regulating... So it does have that facility that it's, it's got an upper threshold. And in this instance, this is now so conductive uh, that I would say that that is uh, 1.3 amps is probably its rating or one, one to quarter amps given it's got quiescent current. Okay, right. So now we know that, I think it's time to open this unit. Other things worthy of note, I tested this. And every so often, uh, well, actually, every time it changes, it, so this is in the first stage of the uh, five-minute treatment. After five minutes, there was a notable click from this unit. And that means that I think there's a relay probably being used to reverse the polarity, because then when it went to the next one, you actually heard the relay drop out again. Right, uh, so I shall pause momentarily. Will I pause momentarily? No, I won't pause. I'll just turn the power off. Uh, Whip this off, pull the lead out, and I shall take my huge tub of simmering filth um, out of the way. So let's put the porta power out of the way. Let's take this bowl out and put it in my sink before I knock it over, because that would not be good. It's making fizzing noises. Okay, let's open this up and see what's inside. Off goes the power supply. Wipe the water off the bench before it soaks into the MDF. Dry my hands, perhaps, as well. That'd be quite a good thing. Is my screwdriver going to reach? It's going to reach these ones. I think the other ones are deeper. I may have to resort to another screwdriver for the other ones. Two screws... Now I'm going to need a, a longer driver. That one's got safety sleeving on it, so it's not going to reach. So I'll have to use this little one that's actually a bit too small for the screws, but that's okay. I'll just use brute force. What's going to be inside? Is it going to be super simple? I think we can safely say it's not just a resistor. It looks fairly sophisticated. There's a little peeper with a sticker over it. The sticker does two things. It protects it during the manufacturing and also quietens it down a bit. So if you've got one of these and you're giving these treatments, you charlatan, then uh, removing that sticker may make it a bit louder. Let's uh, zoom in a bit closer. There is the relay. Where is the input circuitry here? 
These connectors, I mean, it looks pretty well made, to be honest. These connectors are all glued in solid. That's slightly annoying. Ugh. So that is the output electrode on that side. Oh, it says out. That's good. Uh, and we'll pull this connector. This will be the input connector. What do we have here? Tell you what, I shall pause one, Charlie. I'll take a close look at this a picture. Tell you what, let's get this whole circuit board out and see if there's anything in the back as well. This inductor here, it's massive. But then again, it could be part of the current regulation circuitry. Uh, the current regulation circuitry could be based around one of these chips in the vicinity. There's a microcontroller. The microcontroller is most likely... Uh, it's most likely got a resistor in series of each LED and then a control signal to the rest of the stuff for basically enabling it and then turning the relay on and off. The inductor is actually held in the cable tie. That's quite nice. Right, tell you what, I'm going to... Uh, there's nothing else in the back here, so I'm just going to take a picture of the front and then we can take a much closer look at this. Okay, a little bit of reverse engineering has been done, and it's quite sophisticated. I mean, it's not super complicated, but it's quite sophisticated for what it does. Let's take a, a closer look. Let's get down closer to this the circuit board image. So here's the other, the actual circuit board. This is the image. There is this little test point connector. JP1, it says. I wonder if that's for other functions, or if it's just for testing this unit. Things worthy of note. The supply comes in here. And immediately goes to a 78MO5 voltage regulator. That's a 5 volt regulator that is purely powering all the circuitry at this side. The circuitry is divided into two distinct sections. The stuff down here is the uh, control logic. The stuff up here, including the relay itself, is the output control. And that includes this inductor because it is basically a buck regulator based on this chip here. Uh, and this fairly high current switching transistor here. There's the little peeper, there's a couple of transistors here. One of those transistors, which is a 512, that's 5.1k resistor going to the base. One of them does the peeper, and the other one, uh, the transistor here, has a track going, let me just find this. It's got a track going all the way up to the relay uh, coil. So this other uh, transistor here is switching the relay from the microcontroller. The microcontroller itself is an STC15W408AS. I didn't even check that up. I would say it's not doing anything too sophisticated. It's just a generic microcontroller. The only exciting bit of the circuitry is a little bit of sense circuitry here that's possibly to detect an anomaly on the input and uh, shut things down. Not really sure. Or is that one of the control signals up to there? It's going up to here, but it's going up to one of the rails. I think it is... Uh, associated with this sense, what I'm guessing is a sense resistor here for current flow, since I'm, I'm pretty sure this is just a buck current regulator. Um, the button, when you press the button, has a track which goes down to this pad, so it's going straight to an input with a suitable logic level pull up and pull down type resistor arrangement so it's purely just an input switched input to that there are three 102 resistors that's one zero two zeros one k uh, here and there's three here those are doing the leds very simple run them at quite low current there is a one k a 10k resistor here with a little red led in the back that is purely for diagnostic purposes it basically it just flashes just to indicate what's going on in the front panel. When, when it starts up in sort of test mode, or should I say initialization mode, when these LEDs are flashing, that one flashed as well. I think it is just purely diagnostics for when they're actually building the thing. This capacitor here is associated with the output. Um, the little switching regulator is quite a sophisticated one. It's a very capable one. They may have just chosen it because it's very popular. It's marked 2843B. A look online showed on semi do one called a UC2843B. And the pins do tally up. For instance, pin 6 does come over to the, uh, the gate of this MOSFET. And pin 2 
is connected with these sense components here, including um, a pair of inverse parallel diodes for voltage protection. It's got a little bit of, it's got pretty good design, to be honest. It looks as though it's a fairly textbook design. Most of these quack things do. They actually must get the fun out of creating something no fine well is, is a bit shady. Anything else worthy of comment? Uh, this diode is associated with this inductor to and this capacitor to create that uh, buck regulated supply. That's fundamentally it. It's a fairly component heavy. You'd think they could have minimised this down a bit more and just used a much simpler current regulator, but it is just a generic switching regulator with quite a few support components around it. Um, that is fundamentally all there is to say about it. When the unit uh, is turned on, it uh, goes into that standby mode. When you press the button to start the treatment, it's just really putting on a light show from the processor. It's sending the signal to the thing to start uh, the current output. That's one thing I didn't check. Where is that? That may be what that little thing is there. That may be uh, feedback to turn this on. Or is it down to this one? Hold on, let me just... Let me just uh, Take a look at that. That's jumping over to there. That's jumping over to these transistors here. And those transistors there are going up to the chip. They are probably associated with uh, the uh, the signal to turn this on. So that, that processor does, well, obviously it has to have the facility to turn the, the current output on. But all the current regulation itself is, with, is dealt with from down here by this uh, sensing and chip. Uh, what else is there worth seeing? Not a lot. The 5 volt supply, the standard decoupling capacitors and smooth capacitor for that. The processor is just sequencing the LEDs and switching the relay on and off. They've basically got one timing loop in here that is that 5 minute timing loop and it steps through the LEDs. And it just makes it easy for it to actually turn the relay on and off. The relay itself has the two output terminals diagonally linked that way. And if I bring the meter over and test the other two, they will be diagonally linked the opposite way. They are. And that will then be connected to this capacitor. It really is. The relay really is. Uh, just swapping the polarity to the output, it's not doing anything else. Which is really what you'd expect. It's the simplest way of doing it. It doesn't involve an H-bridge driver that would have added extra complexity and level shifting and stuff like that, particularly on a uh, regulated output. So the relay, given that over the course of 30-minute 30, 30 treatment, it's only activating three times just to alternate the polarity for each of those five-minute sections, it's not really uh, going to get much duty cycle in its life anyway. And that's it. What can I say? It is just basically a 12-volt powered unit that puts on the show the LEDs, causes the corrosion of the stainless steel electrodes, the two springs in the unit. Which I could show you with this blue one. Let's pop this open, just in case you've not seen the other videos. I shall pop this open and show you what's inside. Two stainless steel springs that have that alternating DC applied across them, and they actually remain quite shiny, possibly because of the reversing of the polarity. But they basically corrode into the salty water with the salt regulating how much current flows. And uh, that just makes it go brown and murky and unpleasant because it's been filled with chromium salts and nickel salts, which is not necessarily a great thing. That is the medicinal aspect of it. It does dose your feet with a small quantity of toxins, which could have a beneficial effect, I suppose. A lot of people seem to think these work, uh, but they don't do what they claim, that they actually pull impurities out your body into the water to make it brown. It is just this corroding. But it was well worth taking to bits. A very interesting and quite nicely designed and engineered little device. It was pretty good.